Uh, good morning, everyone. Okay, for our third session, I would like to introduce our special guest, Dr. Katrina Vorobiova. Before that, I would like to share a little bit of her story. Okay, Do Dr. Katrina is an assistant professor at Lim Kowing University of Creative Technology, Malaysia, from 2050 until 2020. She finished her PhD in management at Lim Kowing University of Creative Technology, Malaysia, taking Master of Science in Education and Bachelor of Science in Education at National uh, University Taras Chef. Chenko, Ukraine. Okay, she was a great person in her field. In 2020, until recently, she got appointment in various positions as a chairman for PhD defense, supervisor for PhD candidate, supervisor for master student, a faculty coordinator research, and a research committee member. Without wasting any time, let's welcome Dr. Katerina to sharing her highlight for today's session. Hand to you, Dr. Katerina. Uh, thank you very much, Jessica. Thank you very much for inviting me uh, for this uh, wonderful workshop. A special thanks for, uh, to Prof. Krishna. And today, let me share my slides. Um, just a moment. Uh, you can see my screen, right? And today, I would like to talk about writing and publishing a research paper for a peer review journal. So, uh, writing a scientific paper is actually an important component of the research process. And yet, researchers often receive little formal training for a specific writing. And um, uh, today, I would like to explain why choosing a target journal is important provide a basic structure for writing each section of the scientific paper and describe common pitfalls and recommendations for each section. But before you start writing even your paper, I would suggest you to sit down and write down the ideas in a free form. Just create a general outline of your paper. Uh, what is the message of the paper and the impact on the area? What do you want to convince people of and why is your result better than others? So uh, I also recommend while you've done that in the free forum, I recommend you that you select a target journal in your early stage writing process. So a target journal is the journal to which you plan to set your paper. And each journal has a set of core readers and you should tailor your writing to this readership. For example, if you, if you plan to submit a manuscript about um, management or about knowledge management to a journal and you need to explain to a marketing journal, to a marketing journal. So you need to explain what the knowledge management is and narrow down the topic to, uh, for the readers of the journal to understand the key area of your research. But if you are doing research in, a, for example, in a brand attitude or brand equity and submitting to a marketing journal, so the same article. So you, do, you would not need to provide as much background as for the brand equity or the brand attitude as the um, uh, for management uh, journal. So uh, when you start writing the paper, uh, the first what comes in, the, in your paper is the title and the abstract. So regarding the title, your title actually is um, um, it's, your title should invite readers and um, invite readers and ask them to read beyond your research, your research paper. So it should be informative and interesting and consider describing the independent variables and dependent variables or the population or study design in your title because the focus of your paper can be changed as you write and revise your 
um, uh, title and your paper. So I would recommend you wait until you have finished writing your paper before composing the title. Uh, after the title, we can go for the abstract, of course. Abstract, um, abstract um, it is actually clearly um, going to be an important aspect of your article. And both in terms of enticing the reader and make clear uh, intention to a journal editor. So it could be called as a sales pitch for your article. Uh, and it would be, of course, worth, worth limited. Usually for the abstract, uh, a variety of journals, they have standard 300, 350 words. However, I would suggest you to um, check with the targeted journal before you write or after, before you submit, after you finish your article, before you submit to the uh, editor to check how long the abstract should be. And uh, I also would suggest you do not just describe your abstract with this uh, uh, information to find out the relationship or to understand the relationship. Um, explain what your paper will argue, what question your paper will answer, because this will um, um, the editor will uh, continue reading your paper and you have more likely uh, chances your paper to be accepted. Some of the journal, uh, some of the journal when you uh, submit, they have um, guidelines for the abstract. For example, they ask you to briefly state the purpose of the research. They ask you to explain methodology you use and the uh, population in your article, if you're doing quantitative or qualitative methods, uh, explain the major con contribution and conclusion, of course. So that you should explain and, uh, sorry, you should um, uh, check with your targeted journal. So next, after you decided to do the uh, abstract, you do the um, uh, title, you start writing the introduction. So introduction section actually uh, should be approximately three to five paragraphs of um, uh, in length. But look at the example of your targeted journal and decide the appropriate length. So um, begin with the general context, narrowing to the specific focus of your paper. Identify five main elements. For example, why your research is important and um, um, what is already known about your topic. Identify the gap of what is not yet known about the topic and why it's important to learn the new information that your research adds and the specific research aims of your paper. So your research aim should address the gap you identify. Be sure to add enough, um, enough background information to enable readers to understand your study. And uh, let's now talk about the common pitfalls and recommendations. So usually resources, especially on the early stage, they do and they provide too generic introduction, not written to specific readers or designated journal. So the recommendation could come with a choose a target journal and write to its readers. Visit your target journal's website and investigate the journal readership. If you are writing a journal which is, which is more gen general readership, like uh, um, study a uh, journal of management or business study or American uh, business journal, uh, uh, Ameri American business studies journal. So you should include more background information. However, if you're going and aiming to the scopus or the specific journal with the narrowing information, they require less background information and because most of the readers have experience of this subject uh, matter. Sometimes uh, 
researchers use citations in an un, inadequate way to support the claims. So the recommendation could be cite all the statements that could be challenged. And if a claim can uh, be debated, it should be supported by one or more citations. And of course, to find articles which is feasible to your topic or feasible, write the literature view feasible to your topic, of course, you need to use either um, a closed access a journal or open access journals. There's a variety uh, of websites, and even if you go to Science Direct, elsewhere and everywhere, there are journals and uh, scholars already publish in an open access uh, articles that you can simply download and uh, work on it. And sometimes, uh, especially on the early stage, the researcher's aim is vague. So the recommendation could be um, include enough key information to allow readers to imagine the analysis. So be sure that your research aim contains essential details like the settings, uh, population or sample uh, design, study design, timing, sometimes uh, researchers using cross-sectional studies, sometimes longitudinal studies, uh, dependent independent variables, um, and using such details. So after, of course, introduction, we would like uh, um, most of the researchers uh, uh, do the method section. So the purpose of the uh, method section is actually uh, twofold. It's, um, uh, the first is to explain how the study was done in enough detail or in a every detail to enable its participation and uh, to provide enough contextual data uh, details to enable readers to understand and uh, as a, uh, further to interpret the results and in general so the essential elements of the methods uh, sections which is description of setting the participants the study design, uh, timing, as I mentioned, uh, your uh, research is doing cross-sectional or longitudinal study. So uh, recruitment or sampling design and data collection process, uh, either it's a quantitative or qualitative, so dependent independent variables, measurement of dependent independent variables. If you adopted, uh, the researcher adopted or adapted the questionnaires, it follows with the citations, with the proper citations, with the references, and so on. So also analytical approach for each research objective and ethical, of course, ethical approach because research should be done ethically. And sometimes researchers, especially, they do um, they create. Uh, they do some mistakes, they make mistakes. And sometimes researchers only describe methods for one study aim or part of the aim. So make sure that the methods are complete. You are explaining step by step every uh, methodology step what you're doing. That is your right to do the to do the analysis and to proceed with the data collection and to claim that your data collection you claim the validity and reliability so um so uh, another is uh, there is not enough or any justification for method use uh, so the recommendation could be justify each approach and variable you must justify uh, your choice of method because it greatly impacts um, the interpretation of the results. State the methods you use and then define the decision. For example, justify uh, why you choose to include the measurement of the variables or and statistical approaches. And after method, of course, comes the result section. So the, the, the focus uh, of the result section should be associated or log thereof uh, rather than statistical test. So two considerations should guide your writing um, here. First, 
Their results should present answers to each part of the research aim. And the second, return to the method section to ensure that the analysis and variables for each result have been explained. So begin the result with the section by describing the number of participants in the final sample and details such the numbers or who were approached to participate, to their proportion who were eligible um, to participate in your study, or if we are talking about the quantitative method, the data collection, the response rate, who are the participants. And uh, um, so in um, um, easy words, so you will explain in details your demographic statistics, uh, demographic statistics of the next, next Part is the result. Results should describe the participants. Um, so uh, you may organize your result by aim or by putting the most exciting results first. So do not forget that to report your non significant results, uh, these are still findings, especially actually. So uh, do not forget that in results, especially this section of the articles, tables and figures capture the reader's attention and efficiently uh, communicate to your main findings. So each table um, and figure should have a clear message and should complement rather than repeat the text. Uh, Tables and figures should communicate all silent details uh, necessary for readers to understand the findings without consulting um, the text. So include information of comparisons and tests, as well as information about samples and the timing of the study, uh, also in the title or in the uh, result. And uh, do not... Um, uh, in my, my suggestion, uh, sometimes um, sometimes researchers uh, just interpret results by numbers. So that is significant result. We accept hypothesis and reject hypothesis. And sometimes, um, so the suggestion can be uh, recommended that the researchers need to focus on association instead of statistical tests. So explain the relationship between the independent independent variables. Do not simply put that statistically significant based on p-value or t-value or uh, uh, analyzing the uh, path coefficient. Explain why path coefficient is positive or negative, what it gives to you, how independent variable can influence dependent variable and what it gives uh, for further the contribution or the member, uh, the um, uh, contribution or the managerial contribution uh, in a brief discussion. So uh, next is a pitfall, which is casual words like cause and impact are used inappropriately. Um, only some study design and analytic approach um, enable researchers to make casual claims. So before you use the word, word cause, consider whenever you justify giving your design. Maybe I will word uh, it can be used as a associated or related, maybe more appropriate. And the direction of association is unclear. So be explicit about direction of association. Instead of uh, independent dependent variables, um, uh, as I already mentioned, do not just explain the um, accepted, rejected, explain association. And when uh, the part of analysis is done, it's time to uh, conclude your article and discuss. Actually, opposite of introduction section, the discussion should take the form of right side up triangle, beginning with the interpretation of your result and moving to general implication. So this section typically begins with the restatement, restatement of errors 
in communication and uh, um, restatement of the uh, of your results so uh, and your main findings so which can be usually accomplished uh, with a few carefully uh, cited sentences so in that case uh, you need to interpret you need to interpret the meaning or explain the significance of your results. Um, uh, lifting the reader's gaze from the study specific findings to more general applications. So then compare the study findings with other research. And are these findings in agreement or disagreement with those from other studies? Does your study impact additional nuances to well accepted theories or um, situate your findings within the broader context of scientific literature, then explain the pathways of mechanism that might give rise or explain the results. And journals of variety of their approaches all to strengths and limitations uh, sessions. Sometimes um, and some are uh, um, paragraphs within the discussion sections, while some uh, journals um, just mandate to for researchers to separate these headings for the uh, limitations. So keep in mind that every study has strengths and limitations. Reporting yours helps readers to correctly interpret your research findings. So the next element of the discussion is the summary of the potential impact uh, of your applications of the research. So should this result be used in um, uh, other interpretation or so uh, these considerations uh, will help the reader to further grasp the possible um, the possible impact of your presented work. And finally, the discussion should conclude with a specific suggestion for uh, future work. Um, you have an opportunity to eliminate specific gaps in the literature that uh, compel further studies and avoid uh, the phrases uh, such as future research is necessary, just like that, because the recommendation is too general. Um, to be helpful for readers. So instead, provide substantive and specific recommendations for your future studies. Let's talk about the uh, pitfalls and the after the doing during the writing the articles, especially on the important uh, part as a discussion. So the author repeats detailed results or presents new results in the discussion section. So the recommendation could be for the author that they need to focus on uh, how your study fits into scientific literature. So the discussion section should take the shape of a triangle and it moves from a specific brief statement to a main finding. So the author fails to describe the implication of the study's limitation. So where possible, Identify the implication of your study's limitation. No matter how well conducted and thoughtful, all studies have limitations. So describe how the limitations affect the applications of the uh, findings. And statements about future research are too generic. So be specific. Uh, explain in details what should be done in a future research. So when you finish or uh, when the art uh, scholars finish to write all the articles, they should go for the checklist and answer the question. Did you write a specific type of readers? Um, did you find the targeted journals? Do you know that your audience, um, who are you writing for? Who are addressing your research scientific work? Did you follow the instruction or the guide? It's actually, you can find in the uh, journal's website, the guide for the authors uh, next to the submit for art, uh, submit articles and uh, all this 
information. Is it research aim specific and informative? Have you included <clears throat> description of the independent variables, dependent variables, and the descriptive variables, or included the model and presented the results? Have you justified each of the methods, including your sampling approach or a justification why you included each variable, your measurement approach, and statistical analysis? And yeah, have you described your results in the words that convey the direction of association, not just the numbers, not just the um, statements uh, significantly accepted or uh, significant or insignificant relationship. So are the tables, um, uh, title and figure complete? Uh, does the text the results section summarize the key findings from table and figures rather than repeating them exactly? To avoid repeating the details, results, and the discussion sections, and avoid presenting new results or uh, in the discussion. Uh, from my experience, I would like you to suggest uh, um, to uh, remember that research should be ethical, uh, that um, avoiding not only plagiarism, of course, it's avoiding that you do not sell any data you gather uh, from the from your article because we were talking quite earlier let's go to the section and say that um, collecting data is uh, quite challenging. So we have to be, um, uh, we have to consider ethical, ethical consideration. And uh, if you or any other researchers write in a second language, either it's English, either it's French, Italian, please do not be terrified. Any mistakes can be um, fixable. You can go for the proofreading, you can use grammatical tool, and uh, you um, editor in the journal editor will not uh, reject your article if uh, it has critical mistakes because uh, it can be sent to proofreading of course you can pay attention for grammatical words and uh, nouns and so on so um uh, i think i will finish my presentation on this um, uh, note on this stage and uh, please i will be happy to answer any of your questions if you have any thank you very much okay, okay thank dr. You. Oh, sorry sorry yeah. ah, sorry jessica <laughs> dr katrina uh, thank you very much uh, for your presentation until late night you're still you know alive and then give a lot of motivation to us. I see your face, very smiling face, everybody motivate. I hope. Uh, okay, my question is like this. Uh, especially, what is your advice to the postgraduate student? I mean, I compare to your time or my time, we are actually, I'm, I think I'm, a, I, when I was my uh, master's huh, and also a PhD student out of there, I try my best to apply all the top journals. Sometimes I get very frustrated, you know, they rejected, you know. And I try and I try, you know, I dream. My dream is one day I want to go to the top one journal enough for me, my life, enough really. Uh, that is a journal that in my area, there's only one journal uh, which my dream to come through. And uh, that is a journal of industrial relation because this one referred to worldwide, worldwide, huh? We want the worldwide refer. That means everybody will, will refer that. Yeah, so that's my dream. Okay. And finally, I achieved after I become professor, you know, for that journal. But well, while I was was as a student, I actually published even even there's no last those days, no scopus, huh? Those days, no scopus, no index. Only scopus index only started about five years ago. That's all. And that's sorry, doctor. I just read one article from US Wharton School, huh? I just shared with you, someone shared to me, you know what did they say? You are publishing for yourself only, all the KPI for yourself. Then let us say to you, the article, nobody, professor talking, lecturer talking to you yourself, but you didn't talk to the policy. What I said just now, he already said in America, one of the professor already commented, he said, you're talking yourself. My question is, publication, either you perish or publish. That's my key. So why today exactly. all the postgraduate student don't publish? 
they're just waiting for the for you, you know, for supervisor to tell them why oh, they cannot do by themselves. Why, why they go I every mean, like I was wondering, hey, what's happening now? Why they don't publish themselves? Fail and fail. You know, that's one uh, motivation. The guy without leg, with a fame, what they say, you I'm down to the earth now. I'm falling down. I have no lamb, no, no hand, no leg. I will wake up slowly, wake up, wake up, finally wake up. So why? My question is why, doctor? Why, why they don't publish? And then they end up like, um, you know, depending on, on, on you as a supervisor. And you see all the page students, they don't publish. So what is your advice, doctor, to these people? Where they want to start and how they're going to start and why they're depending so much on the supervisor? Rather than publish with themselves, come back to supervisor, prof, I done this paper. Can you give correction or not? Can you make this happen or not? I like this journal. Doesn't matter. ISI or no ISI or Scopus. Doesn't matter. Publication is publication. Please, doctor, you advise from your experience. Um, um, I, I would encourage, I also encourage my students to publish. First of all, you have the feelings that you have some, you have some the novelty for and the contribution to the managerial, from the managerial perspective that gives you something that you bring from the world because uh, your PhD also related to the novelty, right? You're doing the PhD, you're doing the research, you're doing the, um, uh, analysis and everything, but uh, doing the research, I mean, PhD and publishing paper, I would suggest you uh, guys uh, to start with the, um, with the um, uh, simple journal, peer review, double peer review journal, because that, first of all, is your experience. The second of all, you will get the uh, feelings that uh, you every paper, every each paper, you have your uh, improved writing. You have acceptance, so you do not deal with the rejections. You know, some sometimes students and people, it's very hard to deal with the rejections, especially when you highly go for the top journal and they suddenly reject based on that your paper is not. Uh, um, reflect their uh, vision and mission of the journal. So if you are going for the small, uh, every step at time. So then when you reach to the high level uh, journal like a Scopus or Pringle Nature or Web of Science, you will see the um, uh, articles and then your contribution will be much greater than uh, from the first article. Okay, okay, doctor. Thank you. Then I think your advice is actually keep on publishing. You don't know. Reject is a part of life. Am I right? So failure is not the end of story. Failure is the beginning of the success. Thank you, doctor. Thank you very much. <laughs> so Jess, I pass to you, Jess. Okay, thank you, Dr. and Dr. Prof. Bala. Okay, is there any question from the participant? We take the last question. I guess there are no questions. Okay. <laughs> they understand or no understand, we don't know. But uh, yeah. this is you you got questions yes you just start uh uh dr katrina just, just started the first day of your masters so how yes you ask question to dr katrina uh i don't have question because i'm so shy today <laughs> i'm so sorry <laughs> okay okay so uh i want it's to okay <laughs> okay so if there no questions so i will uh, say thank you, Dr. Katerina, uh, for today's session. Okay, for your insightful, story, very deep explanation about journal. Yeah, very great pre uh, presentation. Yeah, it's wonderful to share it. Thank you. Thank you. I hope everyone enjoy learning from Dr. Katerina. Okay. So thank you so much you. for thank today's you. session. Okay, so I pass thank you for the, to the admin.
Uh, Dr. Katrina, some of them asking your slide. Maybe you can give your your email so they can email you. Um, yes, let me uh, share my email. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, okay. uh, that's so, Jess, we need to go to Lincoln University. Very beautiful university. <laughs> I'd like to invite everyone to come to Lincoln University. Very yes. beautiful place. Yes, nice. yes, yes, yes. That, that, is, <laughs> that is my email and the um, uh, presentation. Yeah. Um, presentation. Yes. Okay, so Jessica, uh, maybe I, I conclude. Huh? I just make a conclusion. Yeah. Yes, yes, okay. yes. Uh, okay, uh, thank you very much uh, for all the support, especially the speakers and Dr. Katrina and Dr. Madan. Uh, you you all share very important uh, value eh? and also the importance of public publishing uh, in good journals uh, that I think very demanding now at this moment. I believe your promotion will based on that. I'm sitting on the promotion committee from the professor, I mean from the lecturers to professor level. I, I know the criteria is getting tough and tough. So one of the criteria I think doctor, they look at the, your age index. H index uh, easily you can find anywhere now. People can see you H index, so that's a very tough for all of us. So those people in this room, I think you benefit from the two speakers. Don't worry, we got two more days to go. Uh, tomorrow, day after tomorrow, we got another few speakers. Uh, we'll be sharing their knowledge. Uh, most important, sharing knowledge lah. Not we are come here to show ourselves. Uh, no, no way we can do that. We are just pass. Uh, uh, you got a question? Uh, yes, uh, oh, okay, yes, okay, 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 okay. Uh, yes, uh, like, uh, uh, like the content was very, you know, it was very, uh, you know, it was very uh, wonderful. Both of them have given uh, the the content which they have shared. You know, it uh, it made us gave us uh, so much of knowledge. But I would like to, from my side, like I uh, what uh, we were expect. I mean, I was expecting was uh, if you give some more idea about this H index uh, uh, thing just now, you, which you spoke. So that will be very helpful in future. I mean, the upcoming sessions, if you give more information about, uh, 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 you know, reaching the H index, uh, like uh, as a scholar, you know, as a as a student in the point of from the student's point of view, it is like uh, uh, getting a H indexed kind of thing is is something which is not at all possible. So what I feel is like, uh, can you give some kind of, uh, uh, you know, it's not like shortcut. It is like. Uh, uh, Strengthening your paper to get into that, uh, uh, you know, H index kind of thing. So maybe in tomorrow or day after tomorrow, sir. Thank oh, you. Oh, oh, sure, um, sure, sure, sure. Sure. Uh, Dr. Katrina, uh, do you have any point on the H index? Um, uh, yes, uh, briefly discussion. You know, uh, when uh, Prof. Krishna asked why you should uh, why you should uh, publish or PhD students should publish, first of all, if you go to, of course, for the pursuit your academia career, and um, uh, you need to publish, uh, publish or perish. So um, at the age index depends on the uh, citation of other people when they uh, cite your article. So if the more contribution you have in your article, the clear understanding of the contribution, the more people read your article, the, the, for the readers, right? The more people read, the more they uh, write research and uh, cite and refer your article. So that is how you raise your uh, age, uh, age index. Plus, I would suggest you to collaborate. Collaborate with the different universities, with the different authors, with the different uh, international authors. Uh, attend international conferences where you have um, a social life with the same academia, academics with the same, uh, not saying similar, uh, similar topics or similar industries. So, for example, if HR or management or marketing or I or decision-making process, economics, finance, then you promote, you present your article, people know about art, your work, people know your um, name, people, uh, so you will get uh, a well-known. So that is my um, uh, short uh, understanding, short, short suggestion.
Yeah, 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 it's true, true. Collaboration is very important. And, and another thing, uh, Dr. Katerina and all, uh, Parvati, Dr. Parvati, you need to have a cross-discipline, science and non-science. Example, I give example. Huh? Uh, I'm embarking on a big project now uh, on the, you know, uh, urban farming, huh? urban farming. Huh? So urban farming is actually a combination of the between social science and also science. So what I do, I got this project from my neighbor. He invented one uh, uh, urban farming to enhance the community relationship between neighbors. You see, in city, people don't talk each other. But this urban farming, people can talk each other because we're going to have uh, vegetables, fruits, each other, you know. The people like very exciting. Okay, my neighbor said, hey, I want the tomato. Uh, can you pass me the uh, brinjal? Like that. Lah. So, but the project is just un, uh, untested by scientists. So what I did, I brought all the scientists from UMK and they're all top scientists. So we're testing the, the you know, the artificial and uh, uh, organic, organic, uh, you know, things. Uh, all the vegetable why is so fresh and all this so we tested and also we are going to do recycle things to 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 you know put the drum the drum lah. so that's another expert from the engineering side so finally we are already done we're going to pattern and then uh we're going to competition now very soon so what and from there we got four papers can come out from the science perspective so when you do the collaboration this kind of collaboration so your citation very very high because the paper will go on the science base you know so that's why i see the H index will increase. Lah. So no more silo, work together as a team. So this is my advice, uh, uh, like Dr. Katerina said, you also can work with the foreign foreign scholars, like you see, we got India, we got Malaysia, we got Indonesia, so we can compare the data. That's why I did Dr. Ariana. When my data, I compare to his data, same study, but we compare, like like example, union, partnership. And then we want the best paper in, in India, you know, on the top journal in India, uh, they are very, very old, you know, even the Nobel Prize published in that journal, the imagine how, how top. So we win the best paper because we compare the data. So you can do that kind of collaboration. So that's why uh, we keep on telling in this conference, this forum, please work together with the speakers, with that, so you, you enhance your thing. So that's my personal advice. Huh? So I think uh, already late today, Doctor, uh, everybody is late. And thank you very much on behalf of the Lavender Literature Club. Dr. Frank, Jason, and also uh, Camp Comorin Trust, Dr. Regina, and uh, of course myself as a founding president of Mission IR and uh, Human Resource Association. We would like to thanks to our uh, great speakers. I know your time is very important. You're not, you're not working for the money, but working for the community. Yeah? We're all doing community service, huh, Doctor. <laughs> we, we have no paid anything, I believe. And I'd like to thanks to all the participants here in this room. I respect all of you from India, from Malaysia, and I also respect the young students here to learn a lot of things from the, your senior. I'm very glad to see your face smiling until now, and I hope to see you tomorrow again and day after tomorrow. So all the best, good night, and see you again. Bye-bye.